All right. Good morning. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Informal service. <laughs> Not knowing who all was going to come out today. Yeah. We're grateful the wind chill is no longer
who to what it. They'll calm their spirits. Um, and we've asked this for our entire country. And I would ask this for our, our entire world. The light came unto the world, and the world knew it not. Mm -hmm. I would that one more today gets to know the light intimately. Amen. Mm -hmm. So what do we want to do now? <laughs> Zoom. <clears throat> Are you playing as well? Are you playing with him? First of all, thank you for coming out in this. <laughs> <laughs> Those of you who did, I'm glad I told. I'm glad I told some certain people. It's going to be really bad. So don't. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly, prayers to those in Buffalo, and there's under <clears throat> under three, two, three, four feet of snow. So. <laughs> we didn't get it this time. It's amazing. Well, we can wait till next time. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't 
sure it will come. Yes, it will. It will. So shushing ain't going to do anything. <laughs> In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and life was the light of men. The light shined within the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. That's John 1. <coughs> In Matthew 1, chapter 1, verse 18, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he, was, he shall save his people from their sins. This is how you create a program on the fly. Because you had no idea who was going to be here in the first place. Someone else is new. Hey.
This is the part almost everybody knows. Even Lance Van Pelt knows it. <laughs> By heart. 
and so well that when he recites it, his security blanket is dropped by his feet, if you've ever noticed that. Check it out. When he's done reciting this, though, he picks the security blanket back up, which I find twice as interesting as the fact that he dropped it in the first place. <laughs> And the fact that the tree that Charlie Brown buys becomes beautiful after Linus wraps his security blanket around it is a beautiful moment, too. Because his security blanket he gives to another, the tree. There's a lot of Christmas carols that refer to Jesus as the, the tree springing from the root of Jesse, all of that. Old Testament imagery, things of that nature. And it's interesting that uh, Charles Schultz decided to write that, that story that way. The thing that some people would consider a bad habit for a kid to have, get rid of that security blanket, quit sucking your thumb. Well, he gave Linus comfort, but he gave his comfort to somebody else, just like a God we know. He gave his son to somebody else because we really needed him. Luke chapter 2, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. This taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. All went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, unto Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was the house and lineage of David. And David came from, where did David come from? Where did he come from? What was his hometown? Bethlehem. Bethlehem, yeah. <clears throat> to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should deliver. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in their field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were very afraid. And you would be too if you're out in the middle of the field something, bang, there's this creature <laughs> with this incredible, indescribable light surrounding it. <laughs> right? And he's up in this he's up in like in the air. He's standing on nothing, and you're like, um uh, <laughs> huh. This is really interesting. The angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring unto you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. I have tried my best to imagine what that might have looked like or what it might have sounded like. I can't do it. I can't even imagine what that might have been like. I don't know if you've ever tried. I know artists have tried over time. I know people have tried to describe it in musical terms, even though um, pastors, another uh, pastor, Bob, uh, a very good friend of mine, who said, well, there's no, there's no scripture that suggests that these creatures were singing. <laughs> but I, he says, it says they were sing singing. And I'm like, okay, but it probably sounded like music because... These were, 
the heavenly host, they were God realmably, right? <laughs> they were probably quite like nothing anybody had ever heard before. I've got to imagine that sounded like music. But it probably wasn't pleasant. It probably was very, very foreign to the ears that heard it. But they did hear what was the most important thing. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. That was the message. I don't know, it might have sounded like Jimi Hendrix playing backwards for all I know, right? Mm -hmm. But the words, what they heard was the most important thing. And the understanding that this soldier of God that appeared before them gave them a direct order. You shall. Not, oh, by the way, when you think of it, go see this kid. Go see this baby. Go see this child. When he is born this day, in the city of David, the Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall. That shall twice. That means you really are going to do this. <laughs> There's no room for debate. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. No further direction. So these poor guys have been given go to mangers and look around. Right? Do these guys know where mangers are? Very possibly they do. I mean, they are shepherds, you know, after all. There is, uh, there is some scholarship suggesting that these shepherds were also temple priests. And they had a job of being shepherds for a night because the flock they looked, they looked after were flock, flocks that were supposed to be raised flawlessly. In other words, no mark on them, no deviation, perfect sheep for temple sacrifice. Right? Which kind of makes sense. Um, if you're going to have a flock of sheep, that you'd have three shifts of, or two shifts, at least, of shepherds to look after these creatures. Because you've got a day shepherd and a night shepherd, let's say. I prefer, personally, to think of it as third shift, but I, I don't know that they had an eight-hour work day back then. So I know they didn't have a real good union. Because <laughs> it's getting close to midwinter, and they're getting pretty chilly. This is why this didn't actually take place in December, just saying. Mm -hmm. But here they are. And can you imagine being at work that night? You know, you take the time card, you click in, right? Yeah. You go to the field, hang out, watch the sheep again. Well, occasionally you get a wolf, or sometimes you get a lion or something, you know, worse than a wolf. There's also other predators of the two-legged variety. Y'all got some nice sheep, and I want some, because we... He and the family just bought a case of mint jelly, and that'd go real good with the mint jelly. <laughs> so the shepherd's job was, could be dangerous at that, but you know what? Most of the time they had these little things they built into hills, or they would actually build a little hill to build this thing that you put in little hills, which is kind of a shelter. You go in there and you hang out, right? I've, got, I've also got to imagine they had occasional imbibing to kind of keep the the cool away, you know, and, and especially if they were temple priests, that's possibly likely to, right? These were real people. Okay, don't make them holy just because you want to. These are guys like you and me, all right? And I imagine maybe sometimes they played cards if it was light enough, you know. This whole thing is there's no ambient city lighting or street lighting around anywhere. This stuff is in the dark. How do they see? The well, they got their oil, they got their lamps. They're not making many fires. No. No, because you're going to scare sheep with that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Moonlight. Yeah. Sometimes probably the moonlight. Moonlight, if it's a good, good night, right? Not cloudy. You know, if it's clear. Yeah. 
And of course the moon can light up a pretty nice section for you, but it's not going to light up all of it. The point I'm making is when this creature shows up, it could have been very, very dark and suddenly, BAM! <laughs> right in front of them is this creature. No wonder they were sore afraid. They were so afraid they got sore from it. Right? Oh, uh, what is this? Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. I've heard this said all kinds of different ways. Various Christmas stories told to me over 65 years. I've heard the gentle version, right? I've heard the musical version. I've heard a male version, a female version. I've heard all kinds of different versions of this, right? The idea that this creature that, bam, suddenly showed up, had a gentle voice, I struggle with. Because this is a soldier. This is a soldier from the godly realm, and they break messages. And they don't ask much. They usually tell. Drill sergeant. Maybe, you know. I mean, God, God's going to send these, and he knows that they can. Historically, angels show up in front of people, and people freak. <laughs> so God knows this. But he also knows that if these shepherds are going to bust out of their normal routine, right, especially if they are temple priests, consider this, especially if they are temple priests whose jobs are to shepherd this flock, they got to really bust them out of their comfort zone. You will go see this child. Oh. This thing shows up, this creature makes them afraid. He goes, fear not, I bring you good news. Behold, in other words, pay attention. <laughs> right? Pay attention. I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. So this is big news. Pay attention. This is huge news. This isn't just current events. This isn't just breaking news on Fox. This is earth-shattering in its importance. But it's good, great news. Good tidings in the great news of earth-shattering importance. Pay attention, guys, folks. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Messiah, the Lord. Oh, my God. Oh, my God especially if they're temple priests. This is going to be skull-shattering news. Messiah is born. This creature, this angel, this soldier of the Lord has just brought us earth-shattering news of Messiah. And even if they weren't temple priests, even if they were just, you know, work a day or work a night, shepherds, it was still, it would be earth-shattering to them to hear of Messiah. They're not ignorant about what Messiah means. See, we look at this and we sometimes think of Christ as being Yahashua's last name, like they send him mail, Yahashua Christ, hmm. 302 Duke Street. <laughs> What's the zip code? I don't know. All over. <laughs> <clears throat> of course, we got to know Yahushua as Jesus, right? But on the 33 years he was here, nobody ever called him Jesus. That's something to be clear about, too. The Bible, in our language, in English, tells us it was Jesus, but when, when did that show up? 16. <laughs> okay. When did Yeshua become what? Anglicized? It was well before 1612. 
It was well, it was well before 1400s. It was probably about 800 or so after Jesus went to be with the God in heaven. Um, not real certain. We know that there's Greek and Roman, and the Latin changed the name somewhat, and then something else changed that, and then we got English coming out of Latin, so figure it out, right? But Christ, Messiah, that was another thing, eventually, because people got, people were called Christians as early as 70 AD. So they had a Christ word out there that associated to the Jewish word of, of Messiah. And how those two and when those two connected, I really don't know. <laughs> and nobody else does either. If anybody tells you they know, they don't because there's no real fact because of the stupid fire in the Library of Alexandria. <laughs> right, Corey? That's Merry right. Christmas, by the way, Pastor Corey. <laughs> He's not here yet, just talking to him through the... I know occasionally he'll spy on me, so let's spy on to see what we're doing. That fire in Alexandria. <sighs> Don't even know if it was in the library in Alexandria either. It's just, this is big news. We have a lot of little Christmas cards in them. Very cute little, very nice, and sometimes absolutely beautiful scene on the card of this being a beautiful thing, and the night is blue, and, you know, it's, yeah, 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 it's, and I like blue Christmas cards, especially with glitter on them. Those are my favorite, so I don't have a problem with that, but it's not what it looked like. This thing showed up, and I guarantee you that at least more than half of those, however many of these shepherds were there, before they went looking for this babe, some of them probably changed their robes <laughs> because they probably stuck because they probably crapped their pants after seeing this. And not just that one soldier. Suddenly, the sky is full of the heavenly host. And my God, what does that look at? And that happens after they get the earth shattering news in the city of David. Messiah is born. Born. What in God's name does that mean? You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, laying in a manger. Bam! Heavenly host shows up. God knows how God knows how to end a show, man, I'll tell you. Right? Glory to God in the highest on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. And then they go away. Verse 15, and it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. Some of buddy sounds excited. <laughs> we gotta go now, guys. <laughs> And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. We're going to break for another carol commercial. Mm -hmm. Five forty-three. <laughs>
Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, we will toward men. Luke chapter 2, verse 15. It came to pass as the 